and gentlemen. The lady who loves to borrow money from pessimists because they never expect it back. <laughs> oh, sissy tongue, horse by bull, babe. Thank you once again. It's great to be here. Today's guest is Ivy Lee. Professor, Dr. Eric Spaulding, what is your bind book query? Actually, by ball babe, I'm not a professor from an extinct Ivy League school. I am a substitute science teacher for a behavioral boarding school for juvenile delinquents and troubled teens here in South Boston. Well, that's close enough. <laughs> what is your bind book query? Bible, babe, why do Christians reject the Big Bang Theory? Oh, where to begin? Don't you mean the Big Bang expansion? Care to explain how it all began? According to this theory, around 13.8 billion years ago, the universe began as a singularity, a point of infinite density and temperature. The singularity then expanded rapidly in a massive explosion, causing the universe to form and expand to its current size and structure over billions of years. So in theory a large quantity of nothing decided to pack tightly together, without gravity, and somehow exploded outward into helium and hydrogen. These gases flowed outward into frictionless space, and since there is no friction, the gases could not slow down nor stop, yet they somehow formed stars, galaxies, planets and moons. Yes indeed, it's all very simple you see. Sounds like the beginning of a science fiction novel. <laughs> Let's do the Bible Bay breakdown. How do you reconcile the law of physics with singularity? Law of physics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Singularity refers to the breakdown and suspension of all physical law. This is a clear violation and contradiction of the very foundation of the conservation of energy. The singularity does represent a significant challenge to our understanding of the universe and the role technology may play in its future revolution with the assistance of advanced artificial intelligence. So in other words, you don't know. I don't. Let's move on. With this massive explosion, how could a bunch of nothingness pack together, since there is no gravity? And you junior high scientists have no plausible explanation of how gravity originated, then this nothingness would have no way to push itself into a microscopic pile. I will gladly look into that and get back to you. How can this tightly packed nothingness explode? Considering there is no fire and no match, it could not be a chemical explosion since there were no chemicals, nor could it be a nuclear explosion because there were no atoms. I will have my people get back with your people with an answer. Then there lies the problem of how this nothingness, which was packed tightly together from gravity that didn't exist, was able to expand outward, since the gravity that brought it together would then keep it from expanding. I currently have no answer for you. So when nothing magically exploded into protons, neutrons and electrons, while conveniently ignoring every law of physics in the process, how would these particles unite since they are rushing outward from a central explosion? They would continue getting further and further apart. At this juncture I simply do not know. As you know outer space is frictionless, so these particles could never slow down and would maintain the same speed and direction forever. Therefore they could not change direction or circle one another to form stars and planets. So says you. How do you explain gas clouds in outer space that would push apart from each other due to their low density? Therefore, this would equate to a zero chance of clumping together to form planets. Besides, gas clouds in outer space would expand and not contract to form anything. That statement is about my pay grade. Since the Big Bang produced only hydrogen and helium, how would you account for the creation of the other 90 heavier elements? I don't know and neither do you. How do you account for the disproportionate amount of matter and antimatter? Does that really matter? According to the law of physics matter and antimatter should have been created in equal amounts during the Big Bang. However there is much more matter than antimatter in the universe today. Also, to this very day, when both matter and antimatter are both produced in the lab, they annihilate each other, therefore rendering any Big Bang explosion scientifically impossible. I admit. The armchair calculations are mystical. Professor, what you call mystical is actually God Almighty. We must agree or disagree. I am just scratching the surface with the very beginning stages of what caused the initial Big Bang explosion, and you have answered nothing. 
We really have not delved into all the other evolutions like stellar, planetary, macro, micro or biological evolution, and we still have no explanation for the creation of the human eye. I see. You, putting blind faith in the Big Bang Theory is not mathematically possible, and it goes against critical thinking and mere pragmatism. Yet at every opportunity you revert back to your old comfortable mantra of natural selection or billions and billions of years ago. But let me ask you one last question. Can you name one time in the history of human existence where it was observed that something came from nothing? <laughs> Professor, I am sorry you could not be here today. <laughs> in the end what matters is if God has regenerated you through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Has he given you a new heart and a new spirit by replacing your heart of stone with a heart of flesh? One of the greatest evidences that you have been saved, that God is transforming your life, is that your great desire is to be holy and not to be like the world, but to be like Christ. God does not save us because we deserve to be saved because then he would be in debt to us. God saves us because he is a savior. God does not love us because we deserve to be loved. We deserve his wrath. God loves us because he himself is love. If you have been truly saved, you have become a new creature. God has done a tremendous work in you to demonstrate his power. You are a new creation, with new affections and new desires, to serve Christ and to be holy. Do you look at the world, and long to be like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, have the world's respect and the world's esteem? If this describes you then you ought to be terrified. This could be evidence that God has not done a good work in you. God saves people to demonstrate to the world how powerful he is, not only in saving souls, but also in transforming their lives. I want my mummy. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. You have two options, you can reject Christ and carry your own sins into eternity when you stand before the holy and just God, whereby he is your judge, or you can place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to absorb your sins, as you become a new creation and God becomes your father. With that being said we must repent of our sins. Repentance is not a work that earns salvation. Repent means to change your mind towards sin. Therefore it is impossible to change your mind about sin. Without that causing a change in your actions, biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ, and turning to God in faith for salvation. For it is written for whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs>